I was a boy, I saw a strange horse on a wailing and windswept field near a bone-white cliff at the edge of a churning ocean. Its hide was the darkest, glistening green, its flanks were spotted with verdant algae, and its mane was woven from long strands of slick kelp, adorned with amber polyps woven in amongst the fronds like a veil of pearls. My nana told me stories of these strange creatures. A kelpie, it had been called. It stared at me from across the grasses with eyes as white as sea foam, unblinking, silently beckoning me to step closer. The other children ran towards the strange horse, climbing atop the steed without invitation or hesitation. But I did not mount the beast. Upon looking closer, I was struck with the Kelpie's beauty, the sweet smell of the salt brine in its hair, the shadows that ran down, the contours of her noble head haunting and hallowed in equal measure. It was freedom, it was mystery, a refugee of dreams that had shown itself to me. I felt honored standing on that cliffside. I was the luckiest boy in the whole world. I pet my hand across its seaweed mane, and for a moment we were one. But dread soon settled on my heart as I realized my hand was stuck to the Kelpie's membranous hide. In a panic, I drew from my belt my mother's shucking knife, the crooked blade she had used to carve treasures free from the grit and gullet of sea clams. When the cutting was done, my hand was stained a cruel crimson, and my fingers were gone, but I was free. Away that Kelpie galloped, the other children cheering as their dark steed took them away. A few days later, they found the other children at the ocean's edge, drowned, after the water horse dove into the surf with her naive rider still atop her proud back. It was a tragedy, said the village elders, a warning not to be lulled by fantasies more dangerous than they first appear, another reason to fear the world beyond our well-trod roads. But despite my wounds and their warnings, there was still a part of me that yearned to see that Kelpie again, to mount its back and tame what could not be tamed, to once more stand in the presence of unfathomable, unsettling beauty and to feel the rush of the wind on my face even if that sea air was to be my last. Some call my dead friends fools and I clever, but it was I who had been a coward to recoil from freedom while they were brave enough to seize its reins. That moment of freedom, that thing of dreams, had cost them their lives. Oh, but what a ride it must have been.